Yeah. Hi, I'm Kristen Hallen. I'm doing my informative speech. Um, unfortunately, right now, my husband is out on the living room couch. He's very ill. My son is also in my bedroom, who's very ill. And so I'm in his room trying to perform this speech. I do have my nieces, though. They are my audience, but they are also on FaceTime. So you got to say, hey, you guys. We also have some of our other physical audiences there. So, to get into it, are they invasive frogs? In the South, most of you guys know that uh, with there will be tree frogs all stuck on the side of your house when you got that porch light on. They're all trying to get their next meal with eating the insects and stuff. Um, the specific one I'm talking about is the invasive Cuban tree frog. Um, I had a discussion some time ago about a friend of mine, and my friend had said that they are not invasive tree frogs however they are survivalist because they have evolved over time however i don't agree with her at all um i've spent several years working on you know studying them and following them and especially in the area that i'm in, in north central florida i see that they um i see them pretty often and uh what i'll be discussing though is how florida's native frogs have suddenly started disappearing more when we've had these Cuban frogs who are been coming into our ecosystem. They're also a little bit uh, how they can be similar and how they can differ. And of course, um, are these guys poisonous? Um, oh, many people have asked, what is this frog on the side of my porch? Well, the Cuban tree frog, uh, it looks just like the native tree frog. They can be green in color, they're similar, and they got those little suction cups on their, their toe pads. And they also um, both climb. They can climb on the side of the walls. Not only do they jump, but they climb. And the differences between the two, though, are the Cuban tree frogs are massive. They, they become very large. They're, they're very huge. Um, our native tree frogs, those guys, they can only get up to about two and a half inches. So anything above that, you know it's gonna be an invasive frog that is not native at all. Uh, the Cuban tree frog also can blend with its background. So not only is it green, but if it's up against more of a beige color, the frog itself will start to turn beige. And also the Cuban tree frogs, the females are larger and the, the males are much tinier. Um, they, um, oh, they're, the, the markings, they're visible with their markings. They have the Cuban tree frogs. You can see specifically the, uh, the outlines and the colors and things. However, with the, the native tree frogs, you don't see the markings. You can barely see any at all if there are any. Um, well, now we're going to move into our environment. These, how are these amphibians kind of destroying our ecosystem? Um, well, these climbing fools, they are kind of taking over everything. Um, they like to get into electrical boxes. They like to get into people's drains. They've also been known to give little surprises when you open the toilet lid, one will be there hanging out. Um, the main source of their food is going to be our native frogs, our native snakes, our native lizards and insects and things like that. So they're kind of like wiping out the population there. And um, the Cuban tree frog is a predator. It's considered a predator because it eats almost anything. Uh, my point, we're going to move on to the last point, which uh, is a pretty important, important one. Are they poisonous? Well, yes. Uh, the Cuban tree frog, it oozes this type of substance that comes off of its skin that uh, can be very harmful to humans and animals alike. Uh, once it gets on contact with you, it burns and it's very itchy. And also... Um, Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> and also with animals, it can make them very ill. Like it's been known for a lot of dogs who come in contact, they lick it or bite it or something like that, which I can't imagine is very tasty. They start foaming at the mouth and they can actually become very ill. And some of them do. It, it is fatal to some dogs who do that. Also cats too. So don't forget about those. Um, you know, to me, these are pretty good points and reasons why that they have become invasive. And, um, Oh, so with having this knowledge, I hope to keep my friend will start understanding that they're not survivalist as much as they are invasive. They are slowly moving up north like they're just coming and coming in drones. Also, it is illegal to 
capture one and then to release it. You're not allowed to release it back up. You have to humanely e euthanize them because they are becoming so invasive. Um, they do look similar, like I said earlier, but it's just, there's too many of them. So hopefully we can get those done and uh, stop having harm with them. Okay, thank you so much.